Now, for a while, I've been talking about how excited I was for WrestleMania 32 and how the anticipation was going to kind of simmer and fester under the surface all year long because my assumption being was that with them having this event at AT&T Stadium, that magnificent shrine to Jerry Jones's ego, a billion-dollar-plus stadium that could seat well over 100,000 people for an event like WrestleMania, was that Vince McMahon wasn't going to screw the pooch. He wasn't going to fuck this up. This company was going to put everything, and I mean everything, into making that show a huge success. Because at the end of the day, uh, a lot was going to be riding on that show. It was going to be a very important and significant show for the company, and I still think it's going to be a very important and significant show for the company. But man, oh man, throughout 2015 has my interest in WWE waned significantly, and I know I'm most certainly not the only one. And now as I start to look ahead to WrestleMania 32, I, I start to get <clears throat> more of that feeling of dread and gloom about that show as opposed to optimism and hope and can't wait for the calendar to turn to 2016 so we can start getting to the damn point. Because this has been a bad year for WWE. I mean a really, really bad year from an on-screen and product presentation standpoint. It has been god-awful bad. If you really consistently get entertained by this product on a week-in, week-out basis, I can only say this. Congratulations. Because you fooled yourself into being able to accept shit and liking the taste of it. You must have no standards. Because there's no way that any wrestling fan with any standards, frankly, could watch any North American professional wrestling product outside of maybe Lucha Underground and think it's anything other than the drizzling shits. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. And most especially when it comes to the big daddy on the block, the WWE. His product stinks. You tune into three hours of Raw, and it's mostly crappy independent professional wrestling with a much larger production budget. There is no storyline continuity. Hell, there's hardly any storylines at all. And the storylines that you do get mostly largely suck. There's no payoff to anything. There's no build-up to anything. It's just everything about it freaking sucks. And now I look ahead to WrestleMania 32, and you, you start to really worry about it because you knew in a way that this was going to be a show built largely on the backs of part-timers. Except now, it doesn't look like Sting's going to be there wrestling. It doesn't look like Austin's probably going to be there wrestling. Starting to sound like The Rock, Batista, they probably won't be there wrestling either. So some of these big names from the past that you were going to need to help fill the event and help make it feel like a grand spectacle worthy of that shrine to Jerry Jones' ego, most of them aren't going to be there. And frankly, if you look at the active roster for a confluence of different factors that we've discussed ad nauseum, it's whatever, we all know what they are. But the fact of the matter is, this roster has no fucking stars whatsoever. In terms of the new fresh faces and the new talents, they're all fucking boring as shit. And that's the truth of the matter. I mean, they just are boring as shit. And even when they try to not be boring as shit like a Kevin Owens, the WWE makes sure that they end up being boring as shit. When a Dean Ambrose tries to not be as boring as piss, the WWE makes sure that he is. And even when Roman Reigns tries to not be boring as piss, the WWE damn sure and well makes sure that he ends up being boring as piss. I mean, when I look ahead to this year's WrestleMania, I don't see how this is going to end well. I don't see how this is going to go well. I just don't. You have a lot of wrestlers that, frankly, even if people proclaim that they care about, they really don't give a shit about because they haven't been given reasons by this company to give a shit about any of them. You'll have no Seth Rollins, so you throw that into the mix. Probably no Cesaro, no Randy Orton, so other names won't be involved in it. So you're going to be building a show around Roman Reigns, perhaps, in a chase for the title. Trying to wedge a Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker in there, and probably, ultimately, really having to build the show around Triple H. Which, granted, is exactly what Triple H wants. It's what his ego demands. Praise God! And I swear to God, and I swear to God, and you shouldn't, because that's blasphemy, but on everything that is the Hunter Hearst and the Helmsley, I swear to God, that this company needs Triple H to save this fucking show. 
And it's kind of a sad indictment of the current reality of the WWE. They need Triple H to save this show. They need The Undertaker to save this show. Frankly, I can't believe I'm saying this, as boring as this motherfucker's become over the years, but they need John Cena to save this fucking show. They need Brock Lesnar to save this show. Because I can guarantee, damn well and T tell you that the rest of this roster isn't going to come help rescue WrestleMania 32, and most of these other part-timers that they were really going to count on. That doesn't sound like Rousey's going to be there either. All this other shit that they had put into the freaking basket. This is how bad the WWE is. Is this event that could potentially set indoor attendance records that could draw 110 plus thousand people. The Rock and Batista and Stone Cold aren't concerned about getting booked on a match on that card. Shawn Michaels himself either. Ronda Rousey doesn't seem to be that concerned about making an appearance at that show. That's really sad. And again, it's a condemnation and an indictment of the WWE of today. You know, I mean, what, what are we going to have heading into WrestleMania 32? Maybe Triple H versus Roman Reigns, and it may be for the title. It may not be. I mean, that could be good. It would most certainly be good for Triple H's wallet and his ego. But, I mean, we're still heading into a situation where we're halfway through the 2010s decade, and we're building a WrestleMania around Triple H. I mean, at some point in time, when you keep going back to these names from the past and the part-timers, you can get a diminished return. And that's exactly what this company's gotten out of recent years. They've went to these guys so often, so consistently, and went to the well so much, that the company has now found a way to diminish the luster of some of these big names from the past and some of these part-timers that could really have a major impact by sitting there and over-utilizing them, over-exposing them, and eliminating some of the specialness that is associated with them. Triple H being a feature part of a WrestleMania should, in theory, feel like a big deal. I don't know if it feels like that big of a deal. I mean, but God knows this company's going to need him in order to help save this event. I mean, it's, it's astounding to me that guys like Triple H and The Undertaker in 2016 will have to come to the rescue and bail Vince's, at, Vince's ass out and save his freaking WrestleMania. But that's exactly what's going to happen. Now, to be fair to the company, maybe shit can come together in the coming months. Maybe they can sit there and make something out of this. Maybe they can turn Roman Reigns and Triple H into a really big deal, and they can really make it into something special. They probably won't, but there's always that chance. Maybe this company says, you know, we can't do Undertaker versus Sting at WrestleMania, but we could do one more match with Undertaker that could feel just as big. We could do Undertaker versus John Cena. And God knows at this point in time that you don't really have anybody else for The Undertaker to go against that will feel like a big enough significant deal to be feeling worthy of him actually expending his energies at a WrestleMania to face off against him. And you could say the same exact goddamn thing with John Cena. John Cena has blown through the entire roster. He has beaten everybody there is to beat except one man. You only have one logical match, and in a situation where Triple H versus Roman Reigns may or may not even be for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, in a situation like that, you know, that match may be a feature part of the show, and I'm sure it's going to be one way or another, but does that really scream WrestleMania main event? It's like I was saying last year with Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. It was no disrespect to Roman. It was no disrespect to Brock. It's just the reality of the matter is, did that feel like it was a match that deserved a main event of WrestleMania? At least an Undertaker John Cena feels like a match that deserves to main event a WrestleMania. And how ironic it would be <laughs> that all of these years, it would still come down to Undertaker having to save a WrestleMania and John Cena having to main event a WrestleMania in order for a WrestleMania to not suck. This company still has time, but in a lot of ways they really don't. Because even if they brought in all these part-timers, there'd be no guarantee that the show would be any goddamn good either. I mean, it just astounds me how bad this crap has gotten in 2015 and how bad the WWE has positioned themselves heading into such an important show Arguably the most important WrestleMania that they've had in a decade and a fucking half.
one of the most important shows this company will ever, ever have. And you can't think of three or four compelling matches that you'd actually want to see at WrestleMania right now. I mean, can you really? Can you really? I mean, the co this company is so goddamn stupid that they can't even get this right. You've got an entire year to plan for this shit. And this is the best you've got. You're going to have to rely on Triple H, The Undertaker, and John Cena to save your shitty event. Jesus. That doesn't tell you how bad WWE is now, and more importantly, how scared and terrifying, uh, scary and terrifying that future of the company is. I don't know what the fuck does. Because who gives a fuck about any of these new talents anymore? Who gives a fuck about any of these fresh faces? Because, you know, even if you like what they're doing with them, at some point in time, they're going to screw the pooch. They do. And if there's a guy that they're not pushing the way you want, they're still not going to push him the way you want. And frankly, if it's a guy that you wanted him to fucking push anyways, he probably couldn't draw flies to horse shit any fucking ways. And I don't give a damn if that's Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose or Bray Wyatt or any of these fucks. Who the hell in today's company could actually draw any goddamn real money? This company for years, as I've talked about before, lives off of the brand, lives off of the name. Well, the problem is at some point in time, you have to have some names to go with that brand. You have to have some of the names on the grassroots to help elevate and build up that brand of the big name of the WWE. And surely WWE and some of its fan base will fool themselves into thinking WrestleMania 32 is going to be a much bigger event than it's really going to be and a much better event than it's really going to be. But I'm looking at it right now, and I, 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 I don't even want to imagine the possibilities for how badly that show is going to suck. Because based off of the product we've gotten since WrestleMania 31, how in the world could you think that show is going to do anything other than be a massive fucking suck fest?